Hey boys and girls, welcome back. Um, I'm here with Tom Prucho, one of our new guys. Um, he is our expert for wheel motors. And today what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look at the, uh, the Protean um, arrangement on this uh, rebuilt um, Mercedes. Uh, you'll see that there's a Brabus sticker up there, but this has been rebuilt so many times. Brabus actually did the first version, but it's been built, uh, rebuilt, I should say, several times. And what we're gonna do today is um, I'm going to ask questions and Tom's going to take us through because he's intimately aware with this uh, vehicle does and how it works and and the uh, the electric motors in it the wheel motors in it so let's just jump right in and uh, this is called a hoist review and I'm going to ask questions and uh, Tom's going to fill me in and like I said this is pretty much live <laughs> we're uh, <clears throat> I didn't get much background on this so the first thing I noticed is um, there's something different here. Uh, this does not look, uh, this looks like part of Mercedes, but that doesn't. You uh, tell us what's going on there. Indeed, uh, when we originally installed the vehicle uh, motors, we had to use adapters uh, back in the day, and that was changed in the most recent iteration. So there's a new knuckle design that brings the motor inboard a bit, and a new uh, tie rod end that matches that and that's the part you pointed out. So yeah, now the track width is um, more in line with the original Mercedes configuration, and it also corrects the scrub radius so that you get a good ne neutral steering feel out of it. Uh, well, that's good, it won't wear out the tires either. So let me ask you, or let me point out that there's only two um, orange lines, hot lines, uh, going to the uh, electric motors. Normally we see three. Um, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Sure. So the Protean motors have the uh, inverter <coughs> integrated. So that means there's both the power electronics, the switches, if you will, as well as supervisory control that are built into the inverter that's part of the motor assembly. So because of that, you feed just the DC wires out to the wheel end. Mm. And then the three-phase wires that you might have expected are buried internal to the motor and, and aren't visible. So one of the things that I'm kind of curious on is um, the, the suspension looks pretty much like the Mercedes suspension. And I would have thought that because you've got a battery pack here, that there would have been uh, some kind of modification. At least the springs would have been different, but everything here looks pretty much standard. Um, this is a 55 kilowatt battery, kilowatt hour battery, right? 54, I think is the number. 54? Yeah. Uh, so uh, how, how'd they do that? Well, the, the intent here was to build a battery that was large enough to provide power that was unrestricted to the motors. So this was uh, one of the first vehicles uh, Protean had ever been able to integrate that achieved that. So it was as big as it could be and still fit in the car and basically that meant that it replaced the engine, the transmission, the drive shaft and part of the gas tank area and all of that geometry is now filled with battery but we also removed those components, the engine, transmission, drive shaft and the weight associated with that. So the battery w went in with the same approximate weight as what was pulled out of the car so it kept the total really? weight of the car pretty close to the original weight. Well that's one of the things that normally is a big problem when you're doing a, a retrofit usually uh, everything has to change and in this case it didn't and so the so the battery the battery in the the wheel motors were equivalent to the engine transmission prop shaft rear diff and rear axles that's correct I guess I, I've never well, heard Well, I mean, that before. if you think about 54 kilowatt hours, it's not quite the 100 kilowatt hour plus. Yeah, but that it's we see. 25 kilowatt hours. Uh, well, actually, it's 20 kilowatt hours different than what you'd find in a Model 3. And uh, so this, this range should be somewhere around uh, 200 miles, something like that. And that is a number that hasn't really been tested because. Uh, Protean's mission with the car was just simply to demonstrate the wheel motor technology and make sure that it had enough power to do the job. Mm. So the range may have suffered a bit in that equation. In the same space, you might have been able to get a lot more range, but you might not have been able to achieve the wheel power that this can achieve. Mm. Huh. So it's about Seems power like, versus energy yeah. chemistry. Well, we're going to be driving this thing around uh, to give it a test. 
Um, hopefully we'll get it to the track, but um, if we don't, then at least I'll get it on the road and we can try it on the expressway and things like that. Anyway, one thing that I did notice is that you used to have uh, two um, brake calipers here, and I only see one now. Wanna tell us what's going on? Sure, um, in the original configuration of this vehicle, we did have two brake calipers. Protein had equipped it that way, uh, simply to even the cir circum circumference force, if you will, the tangential force that's applied by the brake caliper could distort the magnetic rotor if it was too much as a single tangent. So we had used two specifically to address that and now the rotor on the motor was redesigned to handle more strength and as such it no longer has the concern about having its shape distorted. It facilitated a single caliper but to get the forces where they needed to be, it had to be a three piston caliper. So that's what you see there versus mm -hmm. the dual single piston calipers that were there before. Plus you see the brake disc is a little bit larger and it's got twice as many mounting bolts. I noticed that, yeah. Um, one of the things that you should know is that um, uh, Protean uh, approached Monroe for redesign on this particular wheel motor. This, this is an 18 inch wheel motor. And um, in essence, uh, there was a huge cost reduction. I'm not sure whether we can talk about that. But the cost reduction went down, uh, the cost went down a lot. And I know what they originally had here because we did work on it and we did know what was going on. And uh, one of the things that I did notice was the, the doubling up of the number of bolts holding us together. And that, that's, um, uh, not the same as the rear. The rear is the way we kind of remember it. So. That's right. And this is particularly because of the differences in braking forces, the friction brake forces yeah. front to rear. That's still the case that 70% of the braking forces would come from the front. Yeah. And the brakes yeah. had to be beefed up accordingly. And mm. uh, this is what you see. So the rear is a lower cost solution accordingly because of the, the lesser brake requirement. Right, okay, good then. So what else can you uh, uh, fill us in on here? Well, as you uh, notice at the bottom of the struts, these are adjustable. Yeah. So we have taken the recent uh, step of tuning the suspension on this vehicle uh, with regard to the dampers at least. So um, I think since your last experience with it, you will find that uh, its uh, ride and handling has been improved quite a bit. Mm. Uh, when we brought it to the States before, it was really um, kind of in the original configuration and it was more of a bragging right. See, we didn't even tune the suspension and it still works well. Well, here we've tuned the suspension. So you should expect uh, an improved ride. Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully I can get it to the track next week. Um, or actually, it'll be right after this in the video, but but, uh, but anyway, let's have a look at the, uh, the rear. Um, this looks um, a lot more like what I remember. Um, again, uh, the only difference being the... Uh, no, this didn't have uh, two, uh, two calibers. It only had one right from the get-go. That's true. And, but you can see that there's only two bolts here um, where they're over on the other thing, there'd be four. So... That's right, you'll notice that the disc is slightly smaller as well, yeah. so there's slightly less swept area. Again, reflecting the difference in need between front and rear braking forces. Uh, the other new feature back here is that this has an EPB sort of caliper, so it's electronically actuated. It's got a motor that's integrated into it, which eliminated the mechanical cable and the cable puller that was part of the previous configuration. So mm. it's, it's automatic now and uh, much more uh, reliable and uh, even weighs a little bit less. Hmm. Hmm. Again, the same sort of connections. Uh, there's only two hot leads to this, no, no control wires. So that, that, to me, that's the right way to go. I like the, uh, I like the idea of having the inverters right inside the, uh, right inside the motor. Um, makes it so that I've got more package space inside the cab and that's what people pay for. They don't, they don't really care about um, you know how you had to struggle putting in an inverter or something like that. All they care about is can I get enough luggage in the back of this thing to make it happen? And uh, I believe, based on what I'm looking at, you didn't change the trunk at all. That's true. 
Uh, if you take a look. Uh, what happened in the deck lid area? Uh, well, we are using that space in the back for some instrumentation. And uh, you can also see that there's a very large uh, charger and DC yeah. to DC converter system that are sitting yeah. underneath the trunk floor. But we did not have to affect the height of the trunk floor at all with this yeah. configuration. By the way, there's been a pass-through uh, shield that uh, has been removed here. Obviously, this isn't going to be open to the elements. So, underneath the, uh, I've I've been a big fan of um, of you know, frunk, uh, 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 carrying capacity and whatnot. Does that did the engine disappearing give you a, a frunk or? No, unfortunately, uh, again, in order to get the battery power level to the level it needed to be to unrestrict the motors, we ended up consuming the engine space and then some. So when you open up the hood, you'll find that there's a very large rectangular box there that is uh, the front forward part of the battery. Yeah. Okay, so, um, so that means that uh, this is a T and um, a T with a spine. So this, this kind of configuration is uh, just 100% different, or sorry, diametrically opposite to what we did on the EV1, but the EV1 was also a T-shaped spine. And um, lots of uh, car racing companies use that. I, uh, this is my first time under the vehicle, and I'm mildly, I guess I'm, I'm fairly impressed uh, with the way that, that you guys kind of like package this together. This may be one of the few times I've ever looked at a, uh, a retrofit of a vehicle and thought, hmm, not bad. Most of the times I look at them and I, I can't imagine uh, what, uh, mostly it's a kludge, so I don't really care much for it. So is there anything else we need to address here? No, no, you, you make, a, you make a good point about the packaging in the car. They did a very uh, professional job of that. And yeah. you know, I think it's Protean's uh, statement to the world that if you're going to build something, build it right and you know, make sure that it has the, the quality and appeal that the yeah. target customer has uh, yeah. an expectation of. So mm. they did a pretty good job integrating this one. Well, this will be the first time that we've been able to take a, um, to take a, a wheel motor car out on the track and so I'm kind of looking forward to it. So anyway stay tuned and uh, the next thing you see after this will be us driving it around. Thanks a lot and stay tuned.